whether or not you've ever raised chickens before, and whether you're planning on raising them for eggs or for meat or for any other reason, including companionship, building a chicken coop can be pretty cool. Now, I have to tell you from the beginning, I'm not a contractor, uh, but I have done a lot of building. I have worked with contractors. I've worked with my dad for many years who taught me many things. And, um, I've put up fences, decks, done a lot of different stuff, put up the swing set that you'll see is right next to this chicken coop that I built. And so I, I know a little bit, but if anything goes wrong... Uh, don't sue me, okay? <laughs> Make sure you consult somebody if you're ever con wondering about structural integrity or anything like that. But if you want some pretty quick ideas on how you can build one using the materials you have and maybe just a few dollars and whatever you need to buy, okay, a few hundred dollars, um, then pay attention to the rest of this video. Here we go. The first step is to look at plans. You want to look at a lot of plans. Um, I looked at several books online. I went to my local feed store. They had a few books down there that had chicken coop designs in it. If you go into Amazon.com, some of the time they will let you browse through some of the books um, and see some of the different pages. So you can get an idea of what things look like. I finally settled on a design from the book Art of the Chicken Coop, uh, written by Chris Gleason. And it was published by Fox Hill, Fox Chapel Publishing in 2011. So there, I'm giving him all the credit for this. And this is kind of the design that I went with. We sort of like this one, my wife and I, and kids from the beginning, and as you'll see, this is more or less what we build. And there it is in all its beauty, not painted yet. Um, this is when the run was finished, and over here you can see there is a swing set. There's my two daughters. This is actually a support for the swing set that goes into the run, but anyway, step two is to decide where your coop will be. You need to look at the lay of, layout of your land. Um, chickens are not quiet. And you have to understand that you may need to consider neighbors. You may need to consider city ordinances. There are some cities that allow roosters. There are many that do not. So if you want roosters, then you'll have to check with that. Sometimes your city ordinances will limit how many chickens you have. And unfortunately, some cities will prohibit the raising of chickens. But if you live outside of incorporated areas, then you have to check with your county limitations. Um, so that's the first thing. Take a look at your area. You want to give them some kind of a run where they can run around a little bit. And if you're like me, you'll want to enclose it all the way, which we'll get to later when I talk about the run. And now that you've looked at some plans, you've got an idea of where you want to build it, you need to finally decide on a plan. How big is it going to be? Where is it going to fit? Um, I chose from the book Art of the Chicken Coop, the very first one, coop number one, it was called Sunny Side Up. And I built it actually a foot smaller in both dimensions. Oh no, only in this dimension, this is the same. And that's because I'm only going to have four chickens. I'm only allowed five in my city. But we just planned on having four, which you'll see in a second. The fourth step is to start to gather materials. Some of the stuff back here was left over from other projects. Like I said, building a deck, um, working on fences. I built a children's playhouse, which you'll see that I've used for part of the chicken run. And sometimes you'll need to buy some materials. I did end up buying some plywood and some lumber. Um, certainly it's chicken wire, probably about 200 bucks in total by the time I was all finished. Uh, but I probably saved at least two or 300 using materials that I already had. Not to mention these tools, this saw, these clamps. Uh, I've got a few other tools that you can't see here. A lot of these, uh, actually all these I acquired doing other projects. So if you don't have tools, then you'll have to factor in the cost of either renting or buying some tools. And here's our birds when they were chicks. We decided on four. We can have five in the city. Uh, but we wanted, we looked at, you really want to look at some books. Stories Guide to Chickens really gives you some good advice on what kinds, what temperaments, how good they are at layers, whether they're brooders or not. There's a lot of different aspects that you want to consider. Um, and for our flock, this here is the Americana. Her name was Hearts, named by the kids. This is a Delaware. Uh, her name is Snowflake. And this is a gold sex link. Her name is Goldie. You can tell the kids named them right. And then this is our barred rock, and her name is Rocky. Okay, I named that one. Um, just so you can see the birds that I was thinking about. And actually, these birds were alive while I was constructing um, parts of the coop. But they, they need a good month and, month and a half to two months before they're allowed to go out in the coop anyway. So there wasn't too much pressure. Step five, build it. Um, 
this is my platform. It was a four foot by five foot platform. The designs called for six feet, but I knew I wouldn't need that much. This is enough for 20 birds, and I only have four. Because uh, as you'll read, most people will say you could put one bird in every square foot. Um, as you can see, here's some of the materials that I reused. This used to be a child's play fort. There was walls here I tore off, brought it down to the ground. It was gonna. I'm planning on. I was planning on using it as part of the structure of the run, which worked out pretty well. This board down here is left over from my decking. It's artificial decking that I got from Home Depot, and I actually have that touching the ground so that the wood that's behind it doesn't. So I figured this treated material, as you can see here, will hopefully stay a little longer before it deteriorates. And I used a jigsaw to make these cuts. This is where the nesting boxes are going to be. This is the door that the chickens are going to come in and out to get into the run. And you can see in the background here, I've got an access door that I use to get their food and water and clean out the muck whenever I need to. Uh, and I did cut two vents, one here, and then I put another one up here later on, which just helps with the circulation. You, that hot air is going to rise and escape out of there and keep things nice and fresh for your birds. Uh, now the plans in his book just required for plywood on these walls, and I went with a exterior wall to help give it a little bit there's a little bit more protection here, but it's also not as stable. So I actually put some 2 by 2s up on the inside in every corner. And then as you can see, I reinforced all the openings. Um, and this is where my hinge is going to be for my nesting box on the other side. But I reinforced all the openings with 2 by 4s to make sure that when I set things down, this whole place would not buckle. This also gives me a frame, because as you can see on the outside, I put some trim to kind of make things look nice. And here's what the nesting box looked like the first time. This whole hinge did not work out. This I just could not get this material to stay on top of this door. So as you can see, later on I spliced two cabinet doors together, and they became my final um, nesting box door. But as you can see, I have the whole floors raised about four inches from down here, and that gave me a little bit of area. I figured I could put four inches of shavings on the inside, and the chickens can walk right into the nesting box, which is actually working out pretty well. Strange thing is they only use one out of the three <laughs> nests, even though there's four birds, they all take turns in there. Go figure. In this shot, you can see the detail of how I put some trim on the outside. And right now it's white. I was eventually going to color it something different. Um, but as you'll see later on when I paint, I just kept it white. Later on I can make that change. This little piece here can actually be removed. Right now it's up there so that the four inches of shavings won't spill out, but if I ever muck it out and if I ever want to, all I have to do is unhook a couple screws and this little bottom section will pop right out and then I can push the shavings right out. Where on my access door, it's already ground level. Um, I slide some boards in here when I close the gates to keep the birds in there, but it also makes sure that the shavings stay in and then I can easily remove those when I want to clean it. Inside view of the nesting boxes. Um, this big 2x6 I put on there to help support the hinge. So the screws are coming through the back and going into the 2x6. And then I went ahead and stacked these up so that my A-frame is not just pinching on itself, but it's also resting on wood that's going all the way, transferring its weight all the way to the bottom. And as you can see, I've got three nesting boxes. The plants called for four. I wanted to give them a little more room. I knew I only had four birds, and as I said, they all use this one anyway. But here you can see there's the 4-inch rise. This is where I filled it up all with shavings. Um, and you can get a good idea of how I also built 2 by 2s around the entire top to give this, the roof a little more stability. Another quick shot of the nesting boxes. These, the birds come in through here. And there's plenty of room. I don't I forget that's like a foot or something. I don't remember what it is. You can check those dimensions. And most of your plants, they give you pretty exact dimensions of how things can be. And these dividers just give them a little more privacy, but once again, these two are completely unused. Here is my final um, nesting box roof, and later on I cover the splice. I sealed it with some caulk and, uh, and I made sure that was going to stay together. I got some strong hinges. The 2x6 is behind here, so they're not going to rip through the wall. You can see the fancy trim went around the vents, too. This little handle came from the old fort that the kids had to help me lift it up. The doors that I close at when it's cold at night to keep the birds in, warm inside, they came from an old file cabinet that I had. 
and they're just old shelves that I took on there. So I did reuse a lot of materials, which, like I said before, saved on, on the cost. Here's the shot I showed you earlier, just to kind of show you how I used some extra tools to put together the A-frames, and I put one in the middle, too. And again, it's resting on the 2 by 2s here, and there's enough wood on the inside so that all these are going right down to the ground, uh, because we do get snow around here once in a while, and I want to make sure that the roof would not collapse. So stepping further back, you can kind of see a little bit more an idea of how big this thing is. Here's the kid's fort. This is like a 5 by 4 fort itself. Um, this is where the birds are going to run up. Eventually I got rid of this ramp when I figured out, hey, birds can jump. And they can actually jump all the way up here too, but it's just easier for them to use this ramp. I kept this little intermediate space in here. It's actually where I keep their water outside. Uh, I put corrugated material up on top. I had to buy that. That factored in a lot to the cost to bring me up to 200. But the rain comes right off of it, and when the snow is going to fall, it'll keep it nice and strong too. And then this is the back side. It's on the other side here. So we actually have three openings. One to get the eggs. That's outside the run. You don't have to go inside the run to get the eggs, as you'll see. This is the door that the birds can go in and out. And then this is my access door. Their food hangs down in here. Uh, the water's just inside over here. And it works out pretty well. And so this is the completed coop. Next step was to build the run, which I was beginning to do here. I was assembling some of the pieces. I put a piece of plywood underneath. A lot of designs say that you can have the chickens go down under here. It's a nice little area for them to go. If you need shade, I have a lot of shade back here. There's this structure. I just kept it here. I don't know. Later on, I could take it out and put some chicken wire if I want. But for now, they can't get underneath their coop. And here you can see where I'm framing the run. I put the old decking down on the floor, and then about an inch and a half above that is where I attached the lumber to give it some strength. I have a big 4x6 underneath the door. These are 2x4s, two of them in an L shape running up. I've got 2x6s going this way. It's a nice big frame, as you'll see in the other pictures. Um, and the door is big enough for me. I'm 6 feet that I can walk in without ducking. I want to make sure that could happen. No, the birds don't need all that space, although they, I did build a perch up here later on that they land on. But it's just nice for me and the kids and the wife to get in there and not have to worry about bonking our heads most of the time. More detail. Uh, I've got a post here, just a 4x4 that was left over from when I removed two of the swings from the swing set to build the chicken coop. And just some straight bolts going through here to keep everything together. This wire is called 2-inch squirrel wire because I found out that raccoons can tear through chicken wire pretty easily and I do get raccoons around here. Um, and here's my birds, and they were first getting out, checking out the place. This is um, Hearts, the Americana, and that is Snowy, the Delaware. I had to put these lower sections down here because they were trying to get themselves out, and I didn't want them to get hurt. But you can see that big 4x6 that I can step on, not a problem. It makes a very strong gate. And I put a little block here so that the gate can't be pushed in by any critters. After you build the chicken run, or maybe before, you can paint it. I had a lot of uh, white paint and some primer left over, and I figured it's going to be outside, so I did a coat of primer, then did a coat of white paint. Um, put some sealer on top of this. This is just a small strip of balsa wood that we painted to put on there to cover that seam a little more. And then I just got some wood cutouts from the local craft store, Michael's, and I let the kids paint some of these, and then I glued and screwed them on there. Um, and we think it came out pretty nice. I also used some foam to help make sure that the door is sealed a little bit when it falls down. And then I've got a latch here that will keep, uh, hopefully, any raccoons from ever opening this thing. And again, this is, this is the nesting box, and it's uh, accessible from the outside. The run's all over here. And here's the whole thing together. Uh, the squirrel wire goes all the way to the play structure. I threw some boards up here to help keep the wind, keep this little area. Um, the old play fort is a big structure and eventually I put a piece of wood that the birds, it's about four feet up and they can fly up and land on there. They like to perch up there. They go around on the inside and perch up here a little bit. Basically I think this was about 15 feet from here to here and it's five feet this way so they've got some pretty good spots to run around here. There's only four of them keeps things pretty clean and they can get in outside of their um, coop pretty well and every day right before sunset we let them out 
they run all over the backyard. It's fun. They go digging after worms, and they naturally go back into the coop at night, so we don't have to worry about shoving them back in. Um, but again, here you can see that support that's coming from the, the swing. The kids can swing right here. Kids and chickens are great. They really are a good mix. The kids are getting a lot of responsibility for the eggs. I just can't say enough about it. Um, I think that pretty much shows you everything here. You can see where it's all put together. And oh, I also put the squirrel wire up on top because I didn't want any birds or anything to have any chance of attacking the birds. If you're wondering why we're so paranoid, we had goldfish in the front of the house. Uh, five nice big goldfish in a pond that we built, and within three nights the raccoons had them all for breakfast. So we don't want that to happen to our birds. And a little bit of a detail at the back, once it's painted. And I put carabiners on the latches, again, for that raccoon protection. Yeah, I'm paranoid, but so far in eight months, my birds are perfectly safe. Here's another little decoration the kids put on there. You can see there's some overlap, so the rain can't get in directly. Um, we're pretty happy with it. Birds love it. You can see from this angle, the runs over here. This is the gate. There's the nesting box. That was Delaware the Snowflake. I mean, Snowflake the Delaware. That is Goldie, the gold sex link. There's Hearts, the Americana. And there is Rocky, uh, the barred rock. And they're all great temperament birds. They get along well with each other. Love being picked up by the kids. So best thing I can say for you is just take your time. Make sure you've got your plans all planned out before you start to build. This whole thing took me probably about five days, working anywhere from two to six hours a day. And... We're, you know, we're very happy with it. We've got those eggs now. If you haven't had fresh chicken eggs before, there's nothing like them. So good luck building your chicken coop.